Figma Auto Animate is magical. It automatically animates all of your designs. Well, kind of. Sometimes it's terrible. Let me show you how to make it amazing every time. Let's dive in. All right, so here we are inside of Figma and let's just set up a simple artboard here. And we'll just name this Smart Animate and we'll give it a good background color here. And we'll just put a shape, a little rectangle on it like this, okay? So Smart Animate uh, is something that you can only get to when you're in the prototyping mode right here. So usually when you start off, you're in design, that's how we can make all these shapes and stuff. We wanna go over to the prototype tab. Once we're in the prototyping tab, you can see we have all of these little points around every object that we click on. We can do it on our actual frame or we can do it on the layers within our frame. And when we click that, nothing happens. But if we click and drag, you see we can point this to something else. Let's go ahead and duplicate this frame. I'm gonna drag this all the way to here. And when I do that, that means when I click this, it's going to navigate to this screen. And by default, it's set to instant. And if you wanna know what instant, dissolve, move in, out, push, slide in and out, all of those mean, then check out my previous video on all of those Figma transitions. For this video, we're specifically focusing on Smart Animate. When we select Smart Animate, it will have a default easing of ease out and a duration of 300 milliseconds, okay? Let's go ahead and preview that. We'll do Shift space bar and we'll click it and you can see nothing happens the reason that nothing is happening is because it's going from this frame to this frame and they're both identical so if i actually go ahead and maybe change this let's go ahead and scale this down to a little square like that we start back from here and we click it look we have some animation there and so what it's doing is it's looking at any of the differences between the first screen to the second screen and it's animating those properties okay let's make this a little bit more interesting let's change this to 500 milliseconds so that we're able to see what's happening and let's change this to a custom bezier we want it to be a very quick in quick in slow out and we'll exit that and now when we click we have a nice smooth ease happening here. Let's make this do a few more things, okay? So we're gonna duplicate this again. We're gonna have it maybe change colors. We're gonna rotate it, scale it up, duplicate it again, change colors again, and let's change the radius to maximum, and we're gonna be squatty and rotate again here, okay? So as we're looking at these things, you can see that when I click on this, we see what the Y value is, what the height is. And when we click on this, you can see that the values are different. When we click on this, the values are different and the values are different here. When we do Smart Animate, what Figma is looking at is the differences between this frame and this frame. And it animates between those different values. So let's go ahead and set up the rest of our prototype. So since we've already established that this is what it's going to be, when I go ahead and click and drag from here to the next one, you can see that it copies over those exact same properties, custom Bezier and this 500 millisecond duration. So once we do it once, we don't have to do it again unless we wanna change it. And you can see it applies the same values there. And then we'll have this loop all the way back around to our first one. And we'll do a shift spacebar, and you'll see that it smoothly animates between all of these different things. And it actually creates some really nice smooth animations. And you can sort of start to see how this could be really useful and really powerful in some of your motion design and some of your UI uh, motion work. The animation happens when it sees a difference in the value of the same object. And so you can see here in our layers panel that this rectangle is named the exact same thing in all of these frames. And that is necessary for auto animate to work. And so you see that when I actually hover over this, that it actually highlights all of the other rectangles. And that's telling us that, hey, this and this and this are all the same layer. And we know that we're gonna auto animate between them. But if I actually go into this rectangle here and I change this to uh, just say rectangle and not have all those numbers near it, you can see it's no longer highlighting that when I hover over this. And so if we go back into our prototyping, it doesn't morph the shape because it no longer sees this blue square as the same thing as this and as the same thing as this. And so it just does a dissolve for everything that is not the same, okay? So if we go ahead and, so if I go ahead and rename this 86 five then we now see that it is part of the family again and it will now be part of the smart animate morphing which is great so how else can we break this so if i actually go ahead and group this and now we hover over it we can see again it is broken so the layer name matters and also where that layer is positioned in the actual frame and so right now this is at the root of the frame it's not grouped into anything else 
it's not grouped into anything else. And so it sees this is the S, the smart animate frame and this is the rectangle I'm looking for. And that's the same as this one and the same as this one because it follows the same order. But when it goes and looks at this frame, it says, here's the smart animate frame. Here's a random group. That group is not anywhere else. And here's this rectangle. Even though it has the same name as this one, it is not in the same group. And so therefore it ignores this. And so if we go back into our smart animate, you can see that it's now ignoring it again, even though it has the same name. It's very important when we're setting our designs up to use smart animate that everything that we want to morph and animate in a smooth way, we make sure that it has the same structure between all frames. So if I go ahead and ungroup that, you can see now it is part of the same family and it recognizes it and will morph between all the frames. So that is a very simple overview of how Smart Animate works at the very basic level. And it gets more and more complicated the more layers that you add on to your frame. So I have this community file design of a fitness app uh, from Mr. Khan here. So feel free to check that out on the Figma community. And I just wanted to show you how Figma Auto Animate works in a more real world situation where you're actually designing an app and maybe you wanna show the interaction of how this thing animates on, okay? So what we're gonna start from is actually from here to there. And you can already see that it was built correctly, that when I highlight, when I hover over this, you can see that these two are the same named object. It's named hourly activity. And so you can see that they're exactly the same. So let's go ahead and see if I set up a smart animate. If when I click on 4 p.m., we animate to this. And we're going to use that same easing that we were already using. I'm going to click this, shift space bar, and we're going to click 4 p.m. And so you can see that it really nicely, smoothly goes all the way over here. And you can see that our activities here at the bottom are reordering uh, to be relevant for that day's activity. Um, obviously, the data here, that's the time here is a little bit off, but you get the idea that the animation is working nicely. Okay, now let's go ahead and link this one up. So if I click on 10 a.m., it's going to link to here. And if I click on 4 p.m., it will just automatically go here and 10 a.m. will go back here. And so I think that is. And so if I go from here to 4 p.m., it animates on with a little bit of a, a dissolve. And if I do here, it also animates on really nice. Wonderful. So this is a very simple example of how auto animate can really bring some powerful animation into your experience. I want to move on to something that's a little bit more complicated. So I pulled these screens from the same community design file. And what we want to do here is go from this warm up card all the way to the warm up page. And so if I go ahead and just drill down into this and do a click and drag to the warm up page, it's going to apply the same smart animate and 500 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So you can see because there's not a lot of related content between here and here, things are just fading on, which is okay. It works decently well. Um, but then we can also see some funky stuff happening right here at the top. So if I actually go ahead and extend this timing to be 5,000 milliseconds, you can see up here, this weird thing is happening. The reason that's happening is because the header in this screen and the header in this screen are named the same. Even though they are both headers, they're two different versions of the same header. And this motion doesn't necessarily seem right here. So how can we fix this? Let's go ahead and check this out. This is called menu. And this is also called menu. So this entire thing is called menu. So what we can do is we can actually change this to home menu. And we can change this to overflow menu. Okay. And when we do that, and when we made that one change where the names are now no longer the same, and we click on warm up, we can see now everything just fades. Um, it may not be the best animation for this, but at least we don't have any of that weird janky motion. All right, so what we want to try to do here is incorporate a scale effect where when I tap on this warm up, it's going to scale up and share the same image. We're not going to fade out and fade in. It's just going to be the exact same element. The way that we need to make that work is make sure that the structure in this frame is the same as the structure here. Already that I see this one is called warm up. Let's go ahead and frame that as a group. Let's go ahead and frame that. Make sure it's called warm up and make sure this one is also called warm up. Let's break it from the card auto layout and let's break it from the categories. And now that when we highlight on it, we can see that it's recognizing it as the same. So let's go ahead into our prototype. And it kind of worked, but not really at all. Uh, so let's see how we can fix that jankiness. Uh, so what's happening is that this is called image, and this is not called image. So let's change that. And let's see if that is helping. So warm up. Yep. And image. Yep. Okay. Uh, 
it's still looking a little bit weird. So sometimes the best way to make sure that the auto animate is not going to be janky is that you duplicate the content from your first screen into your second screen where you want it. And so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that here. We're just going to use that exact same image and we're going to scale it up and move it around so that we're matching the same position more or less. And it looks like we want this to be slightly transparent. Let's move that below the play button. Now let's see what we got. Awesome. And let's go ahead to be something more realistic, like a 300 milliseconds. So now we're getting some weird things. We're seeing the text kind of scale up and we're seeing this play button come in at a weird angle. The reason that that's happening is because there is no text in this final frame and there is no play button in this frame. And so in order to basically tell Figma, hey, this is how we want it to animate specifically, we need to make sure that those elements exist in both places. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and put it inside of this element here. And you'll see that we're running into an issue because it is a instance of a component. So I'm gonna go ahead and detach that in order to do this animation thing. And we're going to scale this down and we're going to change the opacity to zero. So it is there, but it is completely hidden from the viewer of the prototype. And likewise, we're going to put the text right here and maybe a little bit up off screen. And we're going to have that to be zero transparency. And also, let's make sure that we change the background here to match this brown so that it actually is a brown layer so that this color changes into the brown. Let's also make sure that this is a topmost layer. All right, so this is looking a little bit better. So now we're actually animating from this, this little card all the way into this header. I think one more thing that would make this look really nice is actually to animate this warm up drawer in properly. So it really shouldn't be fading. It should really have this upwards motion um, as it's coming in. So a really simple way to do that. We have this, it's called content. We'll call it content drawer. And all we're gonna do is copy that and paste it here into the first frame. And using the same technique that we're using for the play button, we're gonna use that to animate this on properly. So if it is zero opacity and it lives down here, now Figma knows where this object should come from and it should come from this place right down here. Now we have this really nice fluid looking transition with only a few simple tweaks where we're telling Figma, hey, this is where this object should come from. And now Smart Animate is looking way better and not giving us janky transitions and weird fade ins and fade outs. Shout out again to Mr. Khan for these files. And that is the smart way to use Figma Smart Animate. Catch y'all next time.